Hey Jeff, how you doing? So I'm here in Excel and I am doing a process that I learned from a YouTube video but the YouTube video concerned a bingo that only put in words or numbers um, but they detailed a way that you could put in pictures and so I got as far as I could with their suggestions. So um, basically there's, there's two tabs although it might be possible to only do it in one um, but I was trying to copy her workflow as best as I could um, and I did have to adapt a little bit. So the first tab is obviously the finished board um, and what's going to happen is that I'm going to essentially be swapping these pictures out for every single kid and then I'll be going up here and doing a save operation essentially generating a file for each one of the kids as a PDF so far this is the list of all the all the bingo cards that I've made and each each kid's name is on the file with their card also down here in this cell their name will be on the inside the actual file itself um, so what you do first is um, you get two columns in one of these columns, there will just be what I title a random number. And then the other column is the picture or the word in this case. And so there's this formula that you put in called rand with some parentheses and it generates a number between zero and one. So you can see after each one of these pictures is next to a completely different number between zero and one. And it's possible to have all of these numbers in this entire column recompute and then there's an algorithm that lets you um, sort the numbers from, was it smallest to largest? With this tool, it's in the data tab, tab, but I think it's in other places too. Maybe on the home, there's another one, sort and filter. But the one I'm using uh, brings up this menu here from the data tab. And so of the two columns, you just have to click, um, you just have to click on the numbers. I think you're gonna even click on the, the other column too. When you click sort and you choose the random number column from here, you have to click this option that says my data has headers. The headers meaning that it's looking for a title for that um, particular set of columns. So it knows what to, to call the, the drop down box. So then you hit OK and you're going to watch this order change because the numbers in this column change. So you'll see 0.179 change, this, this number will change, and that um, will also influence the sorting of these uh, pictures. So hit OK. See now the B isn't first, now the elephant is first. And so what's happening here is I've got a list of a lot. Um, 50, 50 images is the first column, and the first row rather is the, uh, is the header. So from 2 to 51 I've got an image next to a number. So this particular activity that we're doing is uh, pictures of words that begin with a vowel. And then Fernanda also wanted to add a challenge by asking each kid one by one if the word that was drawn begins with a vowel or not, because there's actually some words like nariz, fruta, um, that don't begin with vowels, or miga, boca, labia. So they're kind of like challengers. So you give the kid a chance to say whether it's a vowel or not. Um, but this also kind of creates a complication, but it's not, it's nothing crazy because these kids are so young, they're not old enough to analyze that, you know, this is going to effect, effectively generate some cards that are better than others. So it's not a hundred percent fair chance because if you pick the idea is that if one of these, uh, these red herrings ends up in your card, it's going to disqualify you from, you know, a combination in that row or that column. So kind of in order to offset that uh, feature of the game, I actually have gone into her list. I have a doc of all her students here. And um, I've got her to tell me which one of these kids almost like never comes to class so that when I generate a card that has very few chances of, of combos, winning combos, or, you know, uh, I give one of them the trash cards so that I'm not sitting there all day trying to, you know, create cards that all have equal probability because I just need to get this done. <laughs> so that's what this column is. Uh, this piece does, those are red herrings.
and the combinations that means the winning combos. So you can see if you've just got two red herrings out of a possible 10 winning combinations, um, seven, there's a combination of uh, seven rows and columns that will lead to uh, a win for that person. So you can see once you get up to like five or sometimes as lowest, um, you know, like four will cut down your, your chances of winning, uh, getting a card that has seven wins to four wins. Even look at this one. This had four red herrings and only led to three winning combinations. It just all depends upon how they're spread out. Because if they're spread out like, you know, in a diagonal fashion, that's that's the worst because it, you know, it block. It's more effective at locking that way. So, yeah, this is something I've maybe been overthinking, but I'm taking into account. So, you know, I'm trying to give all the girls the best cards and all the people that don't come to class the worst cards. Because why not? I can. Um, so it's a pretty tedious process here. Yeah. So let me show you how it's done. It's, you know, the setup, I think I kind of glossed over it, but... Uh, but maybe you get the idea. Um, unfortunately, and, and you can see now there's a problem, right? I changed that order, but still the B is from, from when I started this video, he's still here. Um, so he should be an elephant now because what it's going to do is the order is going to go, um, just because this is the way I programmed it, on this card it should go um, A1, A2, A3, A4. The mirror will be A5. Ocho will be B1. So it continues like this, A1, do, 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 do. So what we got to do is we got to save it because I made my changes to the order here. Um, saved. And I got to close out. Welcome back. Okay, so now I reloaded this, this spreadsheet and like we'd expect, we've got elephant, Indian, uh, magnet, wave, mirror. Camera, TV, man, woman. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, now it matches, right? So at this point, what I would do is actually, when, it, when I first generate the new list, I kind of go through and I count the amount of uh, um, red herring sorrow. Because if it's going to pick, it can pick all, I think, like eight of them that I've programmed into this list of uh, 50 images. Then I'm probably just going to draw again right away because there, there's probably almost no chance to win on that card. Um, and even if that kid does show up to class that I've given it to, that almost never comes. I really don't, you know, I don't want to be that mean. So I'll just, you know, go down row by row and I'll count. Let's see, okay, dual says that's one. Vaso is two. Cepillo is three. Formigas, four, Bocas, five. Okay, so this is a pretty trash card already at five. Okay, so this one's got five in it, which is a fairly high number of uh, red herrings. So now you just, I just kind of look at where they're placed. So we got one in C1, C2, D1, where are the other two? Uh, I've got my fingers on my screen right now. Actually, I do this every time to kind of like plot out where they are. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, oh, yeah. E1 is the mouth, boca, and down here at D5, or at D6, I guess. This is going to be the Ormiga. So, row wise, the first two and the last one will not be a winning combination. So, three and four. Rows three and four will win, <clears throat> and columns one and two will win because columns three, four, five, C, D, E all have things in them. So actually, for, for a card that has five, the, there are still four winning combinations. So that's actually still a decent card for winning combinations, even though there's five. Um, so I might give this to one of the, one of the next boys. <laughs> so if there's numbers, that means the, the kid's already gotten a card assigned to them. And if it's dark red, it means like the kid has never shown a face once. All right. So five red herrings for this kid, four winning combinations. So Nicholas Ortiz is going to receive that one. So I'll go back here. I'll put in Nicholas Ortiz's name. Good spell. Now you can, from the page layout tab, assign 
all of the, the cells that you want to appear in the final print. So you would just like highlight the grid and then in the, con the row with the child's name. And then you go to print area and then you would click set print area. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that again. But I use it on anything. And it thinks for a little bit and then it's like, okay. So now you can see, it's really kind of hard to make out. I don't know if the quality video is going to let you see, but there's a dashed line around all of that area that I just chose. And you, I will have to monkey around with your margins as well. Like I chose the narrow as possible so that this card fills the most page on a uh, eight and a half by 11. And I found out that you can make the columns 19 units in width, and I think it's 110. 110 high, you can get a five by five card to fit with the narrowest uh, predetermined margins by the, the templates that they have here for margins. Um, and yeah, so let's make one. So finally, we're ready here. Now, I don't know if you know how to do this, but you can you can save PDFs from basically anything in a you know Word document or Excel really anywhere where you can send something to print. Um, but you're going to choose this option, which is Microsoft Print to PDF. Pretty sure this is available on every computer with Windows. And what this means is instead of when you hit the print button, it's going to take the print preview and turn it into a PDF, an actual file that's saved. I use this you know, pretty often. Um, here I had to set the margins uh, narrow too to get this thing centered and if it's not centered at the beginning you can go to page setup, click margins and make sure you can see the preview here, it shifts the thing to the middle. So at this point with the PDF thing set, you can also set this as a default in the, in the settings for Windows, in the printers and devices um, control panel so that you don't have to change it from it because I think I have my actual printer, yeah this one, this default here. For the green check, you gotta change that. But I'm doing like 35 cards here, so I am kind of wasting my time changing it every single time. But I've run into some problems, and I have had to shift between actual different printers. And I don't. Know. This whole thing is just you know like a Frankenstein of a process. So you click print. The computer is generating the PDF right now. Thinking, thinking. Hopefully, it makes it. Okay, good. This is what we want to see. Sometimes I've been getting errors at this step, and I've had to change the the printer to a different PDF generator and then back again and it worked and who knows why, but that's the deal. Okay, so Nicolas Ortiz, and then in the clipboard I've saved Bingo de Vocale just to make this easy. So when the parents are going to receive this via WhatsApp, so they're not going to see a picture preview as a PDF, they're going to see just the, the text, just the, the file name. So that's why I put both the name and the bingo so that when they receive it, there's no issues about, oh, what the hell is this? Okay, so um, just to wrap up, I'll show you what Nicolas. So this is what his parents going to receive. So here we've got the name at the bottom. Um, as you can see, it faithfully reproduced the the order of everything. And you can set um, a header. You don't actually have to program the header into the. Uh, to each individual file, you would go up here under the page layout tab, print tiles, header footer, and custom header, and then I just have mine in the in the center. So here you just click on this to format, and then you can choose your bold, italic, the size that you want, the font, all that stuff. And then hit OK. And give you a preview here. You probably would have to go to the print preview to see if you've chosen a a font and a size that's you know big enough, but we're trying to reduce the amount of um, ink that everyone's using. So that's a deal there. All right, so I think that's that's it in a nutshell. So yeah, at this point, like to go to the next kid, I would go to the top of the list, you know, somewhere in the list, click on a number. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh. I don't know if that did anything bad or not. <laughs> I just try to do, I try to, you know, repeat my process that way, you know, if I, if I mess up, then, <clears throat> or if there's something messed up, it's because of my, I missed the process and not, okay, so we got Ormiga, so here I'm, you know, counting again, one, two, three, four, okay, so this one has four cards, so I know this, 
that has four is not going to be the worst in the world, so I'm going to save it, right? I'm going to reopen it, and then when I reopen it, I should expect to see the Omega, the, the ant, what is it? Ant, caterpillar, porcupine here in this order. And then I will, you know, see how many combination has, assign it accordingly, or regenerate it. If, if this were a card that had more, you know, I would just, you know, resort this list and regenerate new and count it again. But anyway, yeah, I've got a lot more of these to go. But uh, that's, that's the process so far. Um, the way, actually, that each one of these works, I probably should have explained it at first, is that uh, you also... Um, let me show that. Here we go. Yeah, you're used to seeing grid lines in a, in a spreadsheet, right? But there's a reason why I've hit them. And it's because when you bring in these files, these images, you know, you'll want to format the, um, the cell that they're going to be in to be square. In fact, you want to make it a little bit smaller than the square that's going to serve as your, um, your scaffolding on the other sheet. Because uh, what you'll do, you'll insert a picture, do to do. Okay, let's just pretend I imported this one already. It might be bigger. You'll just need to scale it down so it fits into that cell. And then this uh, lady uh, taught me online through tutorial how to use this uh, function called camera, which isn't probably enabled. You have to right-click home, customize ribbon, open up all commands here, and it's alphabetically sorted. And then I gave it its own space in this command bar above by just going, you know, clicking on that. So you, where is it here? Camera. And you're going to add it, but first you're going to make a what, new tab, new group, whatever, that I just called camera, just so it would show up under its own heading. Um, and then you hit OK, and then it would appear here and be, become immediately available for use. And then what you would do is you would hide, you would just highlight the uh, particular cell that you like, where the, the picture is, and you would hit camera, and then this little uh, crosshair pops up, and then when you click, okay, I've been getting a lot of that, I'm not sure what it is, but anyway, this creates uh, an actual picture, and the formula for it points to the cell that it came from. So... Unfortunately, oh, you can't really like um, in the in the initial tutorial because it was all words and numbers and not pictures. You could do a lot more batch editing that didn't require like uh, in-depth knowledge of Excel. It was easy, but since moving to pictures, a lot of the recommendations that she made for making the bingo cards with words and, and numbers go out the window because of this whole camera thing. But the camera option does allow you to make this modular and randomized, so it is absolutely necessary to use. Um, but I have never used this camera thing. I, it, it is cool, and uh, you can you can see that okay, this changed because I changed the formula inside of it. So if I go back to equals and I click again here and enter, it changes back. And these actually act like pictures. You can like give them effects like I can give this thing a yellow border. I can make it like you know fade out of the corners, which you can't really appreciate because it's just white on a black black background. Um, but you can also see here there's like really light lines in each one of these pictures now. That's because I turned the grid lines on on the sheet. So it even captures the, the formatting on the sheet itself. So you, know, you would have to like go to uh, get rid of grid lines again. So that's why you always saw it. Like, why does it look like a, a cell with spreadsheet? And it's for that. You have to turn those off in order for those lines that border the picture to this. Now you can see it's clean. For some reason, like any time you generate a picture, maybe it's just my defaults into Excel. It automatically creates a border, which is annoying. But at the end of the day, you know, you can just sit there and once you've made your, your first uh, organization. Like once you once you set these all evenly and spaced in each one of these, um, you don't have to do it again. You don't have to format it again. 
you just do what I showed you in the beginning of this tutorial and it will auto update itself. Um, yeah, I mean, there are options to align these things too, but uh, I think I just did it by hand, which is super tedious. But uh, in the end, I got a good result. So this is uh, this is one way to skin the cat. <laughs> Crack a nut. All right. So I'll look into something later because uh, a different way, maybe that with Flippity, it's it's easier. But if not, you know, I think this tutorial would be really easier for really good to have because I have not seen anybody cover a way to make picture bingo on the internet. Like no, nothing that, you know, results in one of my first 30 hits on YouTube. I don't know why. Anyway, there you go, Beth. <laughs>